let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration, dear brothers and sisters. And now we stand with Peggy and Ernesto on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Peggy and Ernesto, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends as today. In the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desires and fulfill every one of your prayers. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness, pour out your grace on these, your servants, Ernesto and Peggy, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. Primera lectura. Génesis 2, 18, 24. En aquel día dijo el Señor Dios, no es bueno que el hombre esté solo. Voy a hacerle a alguien como él para que lo ayude. Entonces el Señor Dios formó de la tierra todas las bestias del campo y todos los parajos del cielo. Y los llevó ante Adán para que les pusiera nombre. Y así todo ser viviente tuviera el nombre puesto por Adán. Así, pues, Adán le puso nombre a todos los animales domésticos, a los pájaros del cielo y a las bestias del campo. Pero no hubo ningún ser semejante a Adán para ayudarlo. Entonces, el Señor Dios hizo caer al hombre en un profundo sueño y mientras dormía le sacó una costilla y cerró la carne sobre el lugar vacío y de la costilla que le había sacado el nombre al hombre Dios formó una mujer se la llevó al hombre y éste exclamó está si sí es hueso de mis huesos y carne de mi carne esta será llamada mujer porque ha sido formada del hombre, por eso el hombre abandonará a su padre y a su madre, y se unirá a su mujer, y serán los dos una sola carne. Palabra de Dios. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such things, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's always a day of great joy to see two wonderful young people being joined together. And we, as members of the body of Christ, of course, share in the joy. St. Paul says himself that when one member of the body is honored, the whole body shares in that joy. And so, Peggy and Ernesto, we are privileged to be here to share in your joy today. Your joy is our joy. 
It's a beautiful gospel that Peggy and Ernesto have chosen. I remember when I was very young and my parents were building their very first house ever, the only one they ever actually did work on building. And being such a young boy and hearing that we were going out to see the site where the house was being built, I had all these visions, of course, of what it was going to be. And then we got there and there was, there was nothing there. It was completely blank, except my father was looking at the ground and there were these trenches dug with lots of cement that was there. And he was looking and he was carefully going over each part of it. I had no idea what was going on. And he said, well, we are checking the foundations. The foundations have to be strong or the house will fall. Of course, that's a great vivid image. The house will fall <laughs> as a kid. You can imagine. But you know he's exactly right. One consequence that we have today of our culture the way it's gone is that we don't take that time anymore to make sure foundations are correct. Even buildings today are often built to last just a short while. Maybe, uh, maybe at best a couple of decades, a few decades, and then they'll be replaced by something else. That comes with everything we do and everything we own. When's the last time you called a TV repairman, if there even is such a thing anymore? When your TV stops working, you do what? You get a new one. Same with your watch. The same with anything else. If you, if some people, they don't, won't even get a new battery for the watch. It's just too much trouble. I'll just buy a new one. Unfortunately, what that does, that begins to enter into ourselves. And we begin to build on sand foundations in life because we begin to transfer it into our relationships with one another. If things aren't going well, we just stop texting, stop calling. We'll just get a new one, whatever it is. But people don't work the same way. People are not things. People are not made to be used, but we have become that society that used his people and loves things rather than loves people and uses things. But every time that we have a sacrament like this in front of us, each and every one of us has the opportunity to look at the foundation of our own lives as well. Peggy and Ernesto are here to start it off right. They've come to not only make sure the foundation is right, they know it is because it is on Jesus Christ himself. The Mass that we celebrate doesn't just call him to mind. It brings him here present. And today they will invite him to be the cornerstone, the foundation of everything in their lives. It won't be easy. If any of you who are married have an easy marriage, then I don't think you're married very long. <laughs> so, but with Jesus Christ, real love can get through everything. That's the whole point of love. Love is not something that comes and goes. Love is there even when it's bad. Love is there even when it's hard. And that is the kind of stuff that we want to last. That's the stuff we pray for. We want someone who will always be there for us, no matter what. So today, Peggy and Ernesto aren't just basing their love on Jesus Christ and that sense of who we know and the resurrection and all the power that comes with that. What they are seeking is to do what Jesus himself was seeking for us, and that is to take us back to the beginning. And I mean the beginning before there was anything, when there was absolutely nothing. Before there was matter, there was nothing. But of course, nothing comes from nothing. There was, before anything was created, any matter was there, there was, in fact, God. In his fiery love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father loving the Son, the Son loving the Father, giving it all back over to the Father. And that love between them, the Holy Spirit. A love so strong that it could not be contained. And then, bang, everything came into being. That fiery love is what Peggy and Ernesto are seeking to base, to f make their foundation on that fire of the Holy Spirit that will keep them going and to be a light in a dark world for us and for all. 
So today we, we ask God's blessing on them for ourselves as well, that they can be that example that gives us hope, that gives us joy. And all of you who are here, who are married in Christ, this day is for you too. When one member of the body is together, is, is being honored, the whole body shares in the joy. And perhaps as Peggy and Ernesto for the very first time exchange their vows with each other, hold hands and just quietly amongst yourselves, renew your own bond in Christ. Now I know they thought the day would never come, or the time wouldn't, but it is time. Now I invite the wedding party back to the center for the rite of marriage. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in holy baptism, that they might be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Ernesto and Peggy, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ in his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you to face one another, and to join your right hands, and to declare your consent before God and his church. Ernesto, if you repeat after me. I, Ernesto, take you, Peggy, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. I, Peggy, take you, Ernesto, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. And may the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Amen. Bless, O Lord, these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them may remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in and live always in mutual charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peggy's ring. Begin to place it on her ring finger and repeat after me. Peggy received this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ernesto received this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
And we'll have the blessing of the Aras. Bless, O Lord, these arras that Ernesto and Peggy will give to each other, and pour over them the abundance. Ernesto, repeat after me. Peggy, receive these arras as a pledge of God's blessing and a sign of the good gifts that we will share. Ernesto, receive these aras, Ernesto, receive these aras as a pledge of God's blessing and a sign of the good gifts that we will share. Now the lasso. I have the two of you here for the lasso. Bless, O oh Lord, this lasso, a symbol of the indissoluble union that Peggy and Ernesto have established from this day forward before you and with your help. Amen. Let us stand. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Peggy and our brother Ernesto, let us commend them to the Lord with these our prayers. For the holy church of God spread throughout the world, that united in one spirit, we may be authentic witnesses of Christ in word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of government, that in their decisions they may always seek to uphold family life according to God's loving plan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married persons, that they will be faithful to God and to each other, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Peggy and Ernesto and their family will be a source of inspiration and support to those around them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Fred and Mary Jo Pierce and Robert and Leona Payne, and all the deceased family and friends of those here present. May they enjoy perfect happiness in the eternal life of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
may stand. I pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you and in your fatherly love. Watch over those you have joined in the sacramental covenant through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you, and without end we acclaim. Let us kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Ernesto and Peggy, whom you have brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessings of his grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those who he has joined by a holy covenant. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to men, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Peggy and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband Ernesto entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, 
made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
They sent. Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Invite the wedding party back to the center. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of e may God the eternal Father keep you of one heart and love for one another that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.